I had two great wins last year. The one that you, it's pretty innocuous is we had a major change. This was Governmental Accounting Standards Board number 68, uh, which completely reformed the way cities and counties and states across the nation now have to report their pension liabilities and costs. And we also, uh, in, that was issued in, Ju in June of 2012, and we also um, had a major uh, pension reform bill signed by the governor in September, which was AB 340. It was the Employees Pension Reform Act of 2013. And speaking of USC, what start, the reason I'm really proud of this is I actually found out that the dean of the USC School of Accounting sat on the GASB board back in 2005. And I was down there for, with the alumni band. We were practicing for halftime. And I thought, you know, I'm going to go over to the business school and meet with this guy that's on the GASB board because I'm really upset with how a lot of people throughout the state were making really bad decisions about increasing pension benefits for their employees. And I sat with Dean Holder, the, the, the dean of the business school, and I said, you know, the reason this happened is because our accounting rules, our broad, broad range of options, allowed retroactive pension increases that could be masked in the, in the financial records to where people didn't realize what, what they had done after they did it. In fact, many of them, because of the quirks in the accounting, were able to actually show a benefit by giving a, a retroactive benefit increase to their employees due to the way we could change the funding. It's kind of like the, the low interest uh, or zero interest loans you got when you, when you remortgaged your home. You could take out more money and actually reduce the cost of your mortgage payment. Remember those days back then? Well, you know what happens is eventually that bill has to be paid. Well, I convinced Dr. Holder I wouldn't leave his office until I got his commitment at the next GASB board meeting to go back and demand that they, or, you know, you couldn't demand it, he was only one of several, but, but impress upon the board they needed to change the accounting rules, and they did. And it took from 2005 until last June to finally change the rules, and we're going to start seeing better reporting. You, regardless of the way we fund it, it couldn't change the way we fund, but you're going to start seeing liabilities on balance sheets and costs that are real. The schools, for the first time, are going to show their proportionate share of their state teacher's retirement system obligation. Up until now, they've never really had to report it because it went into this big place called CalSTRS, and they've just reported what they uh, pay rather than what's really, really happening. So I was really happy with that. Now back to AB 340, which is the other big win. Um, during the gubernatorial election, I advised both the people on the Governor Brown team and the people on, who was, Meg Whitman, is that who ran against him? Um, both of them, I was, I, I was advising them both, and they both knew that I was advising each other. And what I was really happy about is it became an issue during the debates. We, we got a lot of attention on the pension problem in the debates. And Governor Brown was the winner, and when he saw what happened on two local elections in San Jose and San Diego with reform efforts, massive reforms uh, in both those, one was a Democrat mayor, and uh, one was Repub and that it was a Republican movement down in San Diego, that both, both measures passed by almost 70%. So we're talking total bipartisan windfalls for a pension reform. He said, I got to do something. So he, he proposed his 12-point uh, plan. I keep wanting to call it a 12-step plan, but it's a 12-point plan. <laughs> Ten of the 12 items made it into the final legislation. He didn't get the hybrid. That was last minute. Uh, I, I can't even, it's hard for me to explain it even now. He didn't get his defined benefit, defined contribution, but he got pretty much all of the thing, rest of the things he wanted in terms of really, really closing a lot of the abusive uh, loopholes. And, and, it, and bottom line is it's going to save uh, us $70 billion over the next 30 years conservatively. But because it didn't impact any of the, any of the uh, pen, we have 80 different pension systems in California, believe it or not. Uh, we, a lot of the counties have their own pension systems, a lot of the big cities. 
even um, uh, transportation authorities, there's a lot of independent systems. It didn't impact them. But if we were to have brought them into the reform, it would have saved well over $100 billion over 30, 30 years. And guess what? Guess what we did with that reform? A lot of, a lot of people didn't go, think it went far enough because it didn't impact the current workers. But guess what's going to happen after the new workers start taking over? And you've got a cop that's paying about $850 to $900 a month toward his pension, and he's right next to a guy that was there before January 1st of 2013 who's paying zero. Guess what's happened? Is we got a lot of re pension reform advocates in the workplace that can do our job and push for more reforms that can get some control over the current workers because that's really what it's going to take to get this thing in line is we've got to handle the, li the liability and the costs that we're paying for current workers that are retiring at 50, making even more money than they were when they were working.